The Lord be with you. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a sizable crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind man, the son of Timaeus, sat by the roadside begging. On hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he kept calling out all the more, Son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called the blind man, saying to him, Take courage, get up. Jesus is calling you. He threw aside his cloak, sprang up, and came to Jesus. Jesus said to him in reply, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man replied to him, Master, I want to see. Jesus told him, Go your way. Your faith has saved you. Immediately he received his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, if I may, a few thoughts for your uh, consideration, reflection, your prayer, perhaps. This gospel story, my, my homily thoughts are strictly driven on the, the gospel this week. Uh, the Lord is leaving Jericho with, with other people, and there's this blind man. Actually, the gospels of Matthew, Mark, the gospel we have this evening, and Luke, all three of them, all three of the Synoptic Gospels, have a story about blind people and Jericho and Jesus interacting with them. This one tonight, the one from Mark, the Gospel of Mark, is the only one that mentions a blind person by name, Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus sitting at the roadside, begging, that's what he says, on the roadside begging. Something happens, as I've said before, you know, I'm sure you're aware of the Gospels are not newspaper accounts of what happened yesterday. But there's many years between when uh, the death and the resurrection of the Lord and when the Gospels are written. Mark's Gospel, the one we have tonight, they've been using this liturgical year, they consider the first of the Gospels written probably in the mid-60s, so 30 years plus or minus after the death and resurrection. And then the uh, others, uh, Matthew and Luke, would be in the 70s, maybe into the early 80s. John's Gospel, not until the 90s and maybe even a little later. But with the three Gospels, that's a lot of years in there. Different people writing, different audiences, and so forth. And yet, something happening at Jericho with the blind man or blind people. Matthew's Gospel has more than one blind person involved. Something happened. And it was important enough in their traditions as the, talking about Jesus went on and on and on over the years. That event stuck. It stuck. Now, the scripture scholars will tell us when things like that, they stick and they get used to it. Well, they may be literally talking about a physical miracle, sight restored and so forth. Or after all those years, martyrdoms, struggles, church growing, but yet problems, maybe there's something else that is being talked about more than just a physical changing the condition of the person. For Bartimaeus, he's persistent. They tell, the crowd tells him, quiet down, quiet down, quiet down. No, I won't, Jesus, Jesus. He's calling out after the Lord. He wants him. He had faith. He had confidence 
in Jesus that something could happen, something good. And eventually it goes from being on the side of the road begging to he follows on the way. In the Gospels, on the way is signified the way of Jesus, following the way of Jesus. So a lot happens. So as I like to say once in a while, well, let's, let's have a change of scene. Oh, now I see. Now I get it. I understand what you mean. Oh, yeah, now I see what you're, now I see, now I. There's an understanding of seeing <clears throat> as having something to do with understanding, with knowledge in a useful way. And so the idea that <clears throat> Bartimaeus says, I want to see. And those other gospels, they all say, we want to see. The question gets asked, what do you want me to do for you? That question is in all three of those gospels, written at different periods of time. But they all remembered or understood the question, what do you want me to do for you? Jesus isn't saying to him, I want you to do what I want you to do. No, no, no. Jesus is saying to him, what do you want me to do for you? Caused me to wonder a bit, do I ask that question frequently enough? Asking somebody, is there something I can do to help you? What do you want me to do for you? Or is it just easier to duck away and ignore that something maybe is needed? In any event, this miracle story, it certainly talks about the transformation power of Jesus. He can transform and change things. It's part of his nature. It's part of what, what, what this Jesus is about. And the Lord, of course, we would come to know more about that power as things go on. It provides a new way of looking. Oh, now I get it. Now, Jesus can provide a new way of looking at what's going on in life. Our lives right now, 2021, the Lord can give us new insight. Maybe even insight we didn't have yesterday and something that can come around today and awaken us, something to understand, such that it affects, impacts our words and our actions, that we be different, that we be different, that it heal our heart and our soul. That power of Jesus. And maybe that's what the gospel story is just about. Maybe it's just about the power of Jesus. And that Bartimaeus trusted, and look at what happened. And maybe the challenge to us is, how well do we trust? How well do we trust in that power of Jesus to transform us, change us, make us different? So as I like to say, let's have a change of scene. Last change of scene. So here we are in church. Here we are in church. We've gathered for Mass. Do it on a regular basis, don't you? Here we are in Mass. And we all believe, truly believe, that in just a few words, bread and wine will be brought forward to the altar. I, the priest, will say some words. This is my body, this is blood. But we all believe and trust that it is that power of the Lord, the power of Jesus, is going to change bread and wine into the body and blood, soul and divinity of Christ. We believe it. It's going to happen. It happens in every Mass. It always happens. It happens. It'll happen again. Christ will be here. And so that when we are receiving Holy Communion, we believe we are receiving the body of Christ, the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ. We really believe it. We really believe it. You got the point? <laughs> we believe it. Well, that's the same Christ here on the altar and receiving Holy Communion. That's in the Gospel story. The same Lord who did whatever happened that got remembered, the same Lord. The same Lord who in the Gospels, all three accounts, says he asked the question, what do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? We know in our culture, sometimes we hear the comment with something like that, we'll say, 
Well, be careful what you ask for. I would simply say, have the wisdom and courage to ask. Trust. Don't duck away because, oh, you might not want to get what you get. Trust. Trust in the Lord. So that's the question I leave with you this evening, right now, here in church. Jesus is asking each of us, individually or perhaps collectively in some way, families or who knows what, Jesus is saying, what do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? What do you want me, Jesus, to do for you? Amen.